His vision was to take the taste of the Caribbean to the world. We highlight Lowell Hawthorne's achievements and what he meant to the diaspora. Sometimes mere words cannot express the heartfelt emotions, such is the case when it comes to discussing the untimely death of Lowell Hawthorne. I came to know him through his support of the many community ventures that he was a part of, especially CIN, the Caribbean International Network. He participated in most of the annual CIN lectures at the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture in New York City. He cuts a very handsome figure wherever you see him. He looks as good in a tailor suit as he does in a uh, wig on undercover Sorry. boss. Thank you very much, the extraordinary master of ceremonies, uh, Bob. I am certainly thank you again, Stephen, for having chosen the Paddy Man to do this introduction. Therefore, I will endeavor to keep my address or my remarks short and spicy and have you longing for more, just like a golden crust patty. His eloquent introductions of each year's presenters was an annual highlight. In fact, one year, Lowell was actually the keynote speaker discussing the values of entrepreneurship and community development. During his memorable presentation, he drew on his uh, autobiography, The Baker's Son, My Life in Business, where he talked about the struggles of going from a small shop to building multiple stores and the precarious nature of trying to build a business in a tough economic environment and to go where others had not gone with Jamaican product, patties, breads, cakes, etc. Wherever he went, he was an inspiration. For young people, he was a role model. For entrepreneurs, he was a mentor. Golden Cross trusted in Irish Jam 25 years ago, and that was one of my first clients, and they're still here with me today. He always, you know, whenever he and I talk, you know, I mean, it's not on, on like on a daily basis though, but yeah. you know, whenever, yeah. you, like you always like you know, for me yeah. to look, man, just sky's the limit, man, just go there, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, I mean, even I go back to school thing, you know, because listen, you create a medium for me to like work and go to school, get a good degree, and you know, yeah. whereby you know I have got to fall back on back, back on back on if if if, if say. For some reason, then you know. Yes. And I'm tired of this business or something like that, which yeah. I'm not. You know, I'm, yeah. I, I enjoy being yeah. in, the, in the Golden Coast organization. For those in the community, he was a shining light as to what you can do with your resources to make the world a better place. I am enormously pleased to have everybody here celebrating the 12th annual Excellent Gala. I'm glad that you have chosen to spend this evening with us. You being here tells me you have embraced the vision of our foundation, which is to ensure that our youth is not deprived of education. It's unfortunate that every young white student has the privilege of a college education. So many have been held back because of economic hardship. That is the reason why this foundation has vowed to continue to do its part to ensure that more and more brilliant students like Adam Fane get the opportunity they deserve. I heard, as I said, uh, from a Golden Cross Foundation scholarship through my high school counselor, Leanne Arias, and my assistant principal, uh, Megan Williams, uh, who kind of pushed me in order to apply for a scholarship because I needed it in order to pay for my financial aid uh, as I do not qualify for the New York State financial aid. And it was uh, kind of uh, inspiring for me when I applied and I heard back one day during my community hour that I received a Golden Cross scholarship. And I was so excited because I needed it in order to pay for financial aid and not only that, books. And, uh, Metro in spite of the burden of being pulled into so many directions because of his gifts and talent and charitable spirit, he always had a delightfully open personality, 
a smile for all and I always took the time to talk with the many who wanted to learn from his vast and deep experiences. Loyal has been a son, a friend, a confidant. I have been an encourager and a supporter from day one in the establishment of this business. And so I know the contribution he's made to the city of New York, to the United States of America, not to compare to all that he's done on behalf of the Caribbean, his leadership for the um, University of the West Indies Foundation, the many youngsters that he's educated here with his own family scholarship um, in the name of his parents. Loyal is an icon, and I think that history will be kind to him and history will record all of what a young black man coming from Jamaica as an immigrant has done on behalf of the city of New York for the franchises that he's built. I know when somebody is a game changer um, for our people and in our, in our community, um, I think that um, Loyal will be known for just taking an idea and turning it into a dream for many, many people. He was a great friend of mine. He was a person who I could call, or anyone could call who knows him well. He was a family person. He takes care of anybody who comes to him for help. And particularly his family, his relatives. He was there for them. Lowell and I have good times. We have been on cruises, We've been to so many places that I shan't forget. Is one individual that this, this country will miss. As the tributes have been pouring in, many have had much to say about his kindness and his generous spirit. And I guess the words coming from the Golden Crust family best describe the legacy. And I quote, Lowell was a visionary, entrepreneur, community champion, and above all, a committed father, family man, friend, and man of faith. He will be greatly missed, and we all mourn for the family at their loss and for the Golden Crust family and for all those who know of the great spirit, Laurel Hawthorne.